Hello and welcome to CTV Month of the Woman. Uh, it's the 11th of March 2022. Women's Day is far behind us, not so far behind us anyway, but we are still talking about breaking the gender bias. And here on CTV, as we have promised you since the 1st of March, we've been holding conversations and bringing to you people who are doing exactly that, to break the gender bias through the work that they are doing. And uh, today uh, we have a very special guest and we'll be joined by another one later on. Uh, that is uh, Masiki Novisha. Thank you so much for honoring our invitation. Thank you, Martha, for the invite. Yeah, and her story and her journey, uh, even in her career, is very, very inspirational. And that's why we found it very important to have her with us here um, on the set. Um, she'll be telling us her story and what she's doing and how she has empowered herself as well, so that you, who is watching at home, can pick notes, either as a woman or someone who has women and girls within their community to use the same lessons uh, to empower them. I'll start very quickly by asking, what does women's day mean to you? Well, um, Women's Day uh, means a lot of things and uh, because uh, women are very special in all aspects, it means that uh, it is a day, a special day to say, hey, people, just stop and appreciate women. It's like a stop, just stop and celebrate women. Just celebrate that woman that has changed your lives, that, uh, celebrate that woman that has made you what you are. It's just a reminder that whereas we celebrate every day we celebrate ourselves every day it's just stop and give it is intentional mm -hmm. to remind us that women are still special women still move um you have grown in a family that has empowered you i mean your father was um heavy into business in mm -hmm. barra mm -hmm. your mother has been a woman leader as well has uh taught you even financial skills from a very young age because you saw her doing yeah. business and you saw her working hard um, as you grew up. And those are the lessons that have stayed with you, rising to being a lawyer mm -hmm. and all the different, um, uh, all the, the different positions that you've held and now as, as uh, in, in, in government ministry, yeah? Um, so when you are growing up, at what point did it make sense to you that, you know, this is International Women's Day and we should do something? Or did you grow up thinking every day, you know, um, at some point you feel like maybe the conversations on Women's Day are, you know, just another day, just another public mm -hmm. holiday. At what point did you really, really appreciate the importance of, of this month and this, these days? Well, uh, like you say, Martha, I, I was privileged to uh, have parents that uh, taught us a lot, discipline, integrity, how to be independent financially, how to work hard. And like you mentioned, yes, uh, my parents uh, are business people and they've lived through the regimes and uh, they've been financially independent sin, uh, since, since uh, the, the 60s and 50s. And because my father grew up in a poor family, he would say that my my fear is to go back to poverty because I've tested it. So that was his motivator. Yes, that to was work his really motivator hard. to work really hard. And actually, he would tell us that I threw out poverty for you, my children. You should never, never be poor. So work hard. Mm. And he would take us to special places dinners, tours, holidays, and take us to the most expensive shops, give us the best education. And he would challenge us at the end of the day after he was taking for a dinner shop for you and said, by the way, you are on my bill, you're on my money. If you're to maintain this life, this good life that I've set for you, you have to work hard and be financially independent. And that's how we grew up. I grew up seeing my mother's work. I am uh, my, 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 my biological mother and my stepmother. We were a neat, tightly knit family that you cannot tell. This is, and he managed his two families so very well that nobody lacked. My stepmother never lacked, my mother never lacked. So mm -hmm. I, I grew up seeing my mother, she, she, she was, and she's still the commercial arm of, of, of the family because she runs the all the businesses. Yeah. And I said, if this woman can work and can introduce us to work at a very young age, because I started, as far as I remember, I was in charge of counting money when I was young, business, sorting money, sorting money denominations, sort this, sort this, sort this. That was my first job yeah. as a young kid and, and so child labor. It was just getting involved in our parents' businesses. My first boss was my parents because they, we worked as cashiers, procurement officers, uh, supervisors. Uh, we were in different departments of our, of our parents' businesses. And so when I, I grew up seeing money and I said, well, 
I cannot uh, be in this comfort. I have to also be financially independent so that I, at the end of the day, I don't uh, I start uh, going around begging for money. So coming to women, you know, Women's Day, I celebrate women. Women are so special. I love women. I celebrate them in my office. I celebrate them in the markets. I celebrate them everywhere I go, on the streets. In the, I, I celebrate women. And, and it really I celebrate shows. girls. <laughs> I, you, you're beautiful. You're, you're smart like now. Mm -hmm. You, Martha. I, I, I find people and I, and I appreciate them. In fact, some people start asking, what motivates you? Even others crack a joke. Are you straight? I'm like, I am. <laughs> but I am. Women are special. And we celebrate them. So we celebrate women. We started seeing, of course, uh, the celebrations when we were young. And of course, when you're young, it may not, you know, really make, 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 what, make what's it. Happening but here. when you grow up, you're like, okay, I'm now a mother, I'm a, I'm, 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 I'm a teacher, I'm a mentor, I'm a, a, a public servant, I'm a lawyer, I'm all this, I'm a Rotarian, I'm, I'm in community leadership. I'm like, okay. What does it take? I mean, women run the world. You can do a million things. As I'm in this meeting, I'm thinking about the next thing, be very innovative. There's a way God made women special. And the problem is that some women do not realize that they're specially made. You know, you tell a woman you're beautiful. Oh, really? Oh, you have a nice shoe. Oh, you see this shoe is old. No, nobody's interested in the story. No, no, maybe Take no one it. had told them that they are beautiful. Yes. So I have that confidence. Even if you told me, Masi, you ugly or what, I have that inbuilt confidence because my parents gave it to me. And my father did not segregate, gave us the same education with the boys, gave us the same shares in, the, in his companies, gave us assets in his estate. It doesn't matter whether you're a girl or a boy. We, even our, our, our brothers know we are so empowered. Mm -hmm. They know you don't touch the girls because they are too empowered. Our parents empowered us so much. Um, and it's interesting that you say that the lessons I'm picking um, for, for us who are nurturing children and anyone watching at home is as a parent, involve your children in what you're doing. Let them learn what you're doing because that's a form of empowerment and it played a very key role in shaping who you are. Yes. And teaching them about money and business, uh, which may maybe sometimes we feel like, oh, you know, maybe the girl yes. will not be able to handle the money so well, but your father didn't care and he said, my girls should do this. Yes, thank mm. you, Martha. Actually, my mother is a very tough woman. She's a politician and she's a deputy speaker in where, where we come from in Ibarra. And She's a no-nonsense woman. She's this person who said you have to work, whether you like it or not. So whenever even sometimes we'll be in our lazy moments, we hear her come, the opening of the gate. You have to grab a book or get a broom or you have to, she has to find you in action. Have you become the same day, mother? <laughs> yes, I'm that kind of mother. One day she caught me unawares. I think I was watching Riviera or something, a soap on TV, and I grabbed a book and the book was upside down. <laughs> She slapped me, said, hey, don't play around. She was, we called her police, mm -hmm. but now she has come down. And so it took a tough mother. My father is this, was this diplomatic person, you know, uh, wants her children, you know, to, to, to be treated in a way he's diplomatic, but my mother was tough. So yes, being brought up by a tough mother, but also the fact that she wanted us to work. And the first actual week of our holiday, because we grew up in the city in Barra, at the first week of our holiday, my mother would send us to her village in Trungamo district in Rubari. Go for one week, see how people live, how people dig, how people fetch water. So we learned actually our skilling would go for that part. But also we have a farm in, in Baran. They would also, my father would also send us there to supervise, to dig, to see what happens. So I feel so bad that now the generation, our generation, we just let our children control the remote. We just let our children play with, you know, mm. those playstations. We just let our children, how oh, let my children not touch? No, I was brought up with that manual, and my children know you have to wash your clothes as soon as you as enter primary I... two. Yeah. You have to learn to cook. My children cook for themselves. My, actually, my house assistants, uh, my house ass uh, my, uh, assistant managers, the common, the so commonly called maids, which I don't use, mm. they are like queens because we saw them in our home. We would cook for ourselves. We had all these servants. We had what? But our parents insisted that we cook, we clean, we do everything. Everybody had their own chores. I was in charge of procurement. I was in charge of cleaning and also decorating the Christmas tree. Whatever function that was at home, I would make sure that everything is decorated: flowers, balloons, toilet paper. Those days, cotton wool, and I became actually a decorator uh, and I started even commercializing that when I reached university. 
I am one of the best decorators, only that now I'm busy, I do not uh, decorate functions. So it is all from our homes. Our par for us as parents, if we sit and let our children control the remote and the playstations, they will be controlled in the near future by, by the by, children. By the other children who yes, are empowered, like exactly. the ones you're raising. Mm. You called your mother police. Yeah. And I know that while you were growing up, you held different positions of leadership mm. throughout school. Would mm. you say that it's because of her, that policing that she had that helped you to become mm. the leader that you were throughout mm. school, even up to now? Yes. I, I, think, I, I believe that leadership starts in our homes. Because if you cannot do any chore, if you cannot wake up in time, if you cannot have that self-leadership in your home, it's very difficult to have it. And I always have problems with people who think that, oh, I'll start, uh, my leadership skills will come out when I become CEO, or when I become a manager, when I get to the top. No, leadership, you can influence even at the lowest level. You can be the best sweeper in the world if you're doing sweeping. Mm -hmm. You can be the best vendor if you're doing vending. So coming back to the question, yes, my leadership skills started from home. I would, you know, we were trained, we were, uh, okay, I, I'm also a born leader, I'm also a born leader. That right from childhood, I was always in charge. Yeah. Even at home <laughs> with my big siblings, with my big sister. Oh, really? Oh, no, ask Mercy. Mm. Oh, Mercy knows this. So somehow I was found uh, taking charge, taking charge of, of uh, responsibilities at home, doing their work schedules, uh, telling, reminding people, hey, by the way, this is your work, you have to do this, you have to do this at home. No, you're in charge of sweeping the compound today. And no, 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 I swept yes, I said, no, you're in charge. Let's do a roster, so like that. So when I joined, of course, Sunday school, I was in charge. <laughs> Somehow <laughs> Sunday school, then primary school, then secondary school, I found myself being a head girl, being a, a minister, being, and on top of being head girl and minister, I'll be in charge of like chairperson entertainment, chairperson scripture, you know, I, sometimes I don't know how I did it. And I'll be academically okay. Mm. So even university, I was the vice president of the Macquarie Law, uh, University, uh, the Macquarie Law School. Um, uh, then, then the Law Development Center, I was a Minister of Health and also a farm leader. I was the only lady who held two posts. We had yes women on that, uh, 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 a few women on, on, on the leadership uh, uh, team, but I held two posts. Then even at my postgraduate, the master's classes that I've attended, the universities, I find myself being a leader. And then, of course, in my office space, I, would, I have risen through the ranks. And I tell people, it is not by mistake that I'm here. It's not that I, woo, woo, I no, no. Somehow, internationality, you, you influence wherever you are, whether you're a manager, whether you're a small officer, you create your own influence, and that if, and by the way, people see, mm -hmm. and people watch. And reason speak. We call it in law, res ipsa loquita. Things speak, things. You can see things, you can feel them. Yeah. You don't just... Wake up. So if you're not intentional, I tell people, if you do not lead and excel and influence from the position where you are, you will not go far because you start your influence from the lowest level. So I started my influence from primary school. And people are surprised that I'm not in politics, in active politics. I am not. I don't. Though you're in service. Yes, but I'm course. in public service. And I enjoy it. Just making that change, making sure that my, my people, our people are served, making sure. And I'm a Rotarian. I've served through all uh, the departments, all directors in my club, director, youth, director, PR, uh, secretary, then president, now I'm the incoming assistant governor of some clubs. I mean, I, I've chaired uh, projects, and I do all this, and I look back and I say, hey, how did I do it? I, I, I believe in the law of the mirror. Yeah. I go in the mirror and I start talking to myself, by the way, how did you go through this? This was and, a crisis. And partly the parents this was are a there. crisis. This yeah. was what? This was, you know, you meet so many hurdles as a leader, mm. so many challenges. There's something mm. uh, that you mentioned uh, recently. I think you said if, if you don't expect hardships, mm. then leadership um, is not for you. Yes. Um, and I think that's a very, very powerful yes. statement uh, right there. Um, in your journey in Rising Up, we've seen the, the, the role that your parents played in that. But somewhere along the way, and especially entering into your career, uh, what do you think you did right, or you've been doing right, uh, to help you into that uh, position? You talk about the competence. Um, I know you've talked about before, uh, previously, um, I heard you mention that uh, you've not had any challenges of maybe people asking you for favors to promote you, which sometimes some women face, or some people think, you know, for a woman to rise to the top, that's what yeah. they have to go through. Yeah, what are some of the uh, when you look back, when you look into that mirror that you talked about, what do you say, I think it was this, I think it was that that has helped me, which might inspire someone to also do the same? Thank you, Martha. That's a very good question. 
there are many things that lead us to where we are, especially mm -hmm. to the top. I, first of all, attribute it to God. I think I've had a lot of favor, but I'm also a good person. I mean well. You open my heart, oh my God, I mean well for everybody. I see you beautiful, I appreciate God for the beauty. I see you building a, 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 a mansion, I appreciate God for giving you resources. I'm happy for people. I have never been selfish or felt smaller because somebody has got something. Mm. Because I believe what, in the law of abundance. The, the zero sum game. The principle of, of, mm. of, of abundance. There's mm. too much abundance in the world that you can excel in this area. And another one excels. You know, we have selfish leaders, leaders that bully people who think that they have to do everything or be at the top, be the best. You can't. You can't when, when you make everything. bullies, what do you do? Well, I, I have been lucky, like maybe because of. Uh, I'm, I'm confident by the time you bully me, uh, <laughs> maybe you're also strong, but uh, you talked about something like making it to the top, yes. especially for women. I want to attest to the whole world that I have made it to the top using my competence, of course God, favor, but also competence. I have been intentional in whatever I do. I've prepared myself. Like when I finished my law development center, I worked in a law firm, then joined government, then did an MBA. At that time, people were looking at MBA. Why, why, a lawyer doing MBA? I did so fast, as I finished MBA, I did a master's of laws. And my peers were like, hey, are you going to do work? I was preparing myself for the best because opportunities come to those who prepare themselves. If you sleep on your job, if you sleep on your qualification, because the world changes. And then I did uh, courses in oil and gas. I was positioned myself for oil and gas. You do this leadership. I've done so many leadership courses. Now I'm doing my doctorate. I mean, you have, you don't, you become intentional. D did it so, come natural to you or you had people guiding no, you along the way? No, actually it came natural to me and the fact that I had the best mentors, my father and my mother. Yeah. My father would take us every time we'd be going to school, would have a meeting. A pre going to school meeting every time and would take us through a session mm -hmm. of uh, discipline, integrity, sex education, what, the future. The f my father would tell us about the future and we'd be like, what? So we were so lucky that, and I do it even at home in my, with my children, he would sit us down and my mother would sit us and tell us the realities. You're going to school, you know the reason that took you there, don't join peer pressure, don't do that. And, and he would insist, actually he would close every statement that when you have your education, it will take you places. So we started valuing education. We knew that, and he would say that, you're not studying for me, you're studying for yourself. And actually he would, he would, they would say that, I have made my wealth. This is not your wealth. So you have to make your wealth. Much, and much as you are making the money and yes. counting all that money, they were reminding yes, you. Yes, that this is not yours. yours. <laughs> it is ours. So you go and make yours. So we had that. We, ha we had the opportunity that our parents were in our lives. Actually, I still thrive and survive on my parents' mentorship and skills. That to the extent, every time I get challenged, I call my mother, I call my father, I died like three years ago. So I, I call them, I call, I'm going through this. And he will, he's the most intelligent woman that I've ever met. Mm. Beautiful, intelligent, that woman, and she strong. counsels you, she takes you through. I mean, it is amazing and we have to do it for our children. Let's not abandon them. So I have made it to the top without using my body. The only body part I've used is my brain my intellect, not any below uh, my, my, my head. Mm. That one I have never, M maybe and nobody even working. has, uh, nobody has even tried. Mm. And sometimes we take it for granted and we think that every woman that goes there, no, many women have made it to the top, if not all, without having to, 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 to sweet talk somebody or not, no. And even our men are disciplined, by the way. Our men are disciplined, they're not interested in that, unless you show that we're also interested. It's, it takes actually sometimes to, a two-way force that you show some, uh, you know, uh, indications that you want, and then the person also gets a, 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 plat a platform to say that. But of course, I also can't rule out the fact that there are people that have gone through that challenge of uh, harassment, which is, uh, of course, uh, not acceptable, yeah, and, being and should taken never use their bodies. Of, yeah. Yes, never allowed to be taken advantage of. So I got my qualifications, I got my skills, I got my networks. I work so hard. I work so hard in all ways. Put me in Rotary, I will excel. Put me in the kitchen, I'll cook you the best food. 
put me on the dance floor. I also dance hard. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I, I really put in a lot of effort in whatever I do. So, and, and you've moved away from, you know, doing that. You've now gone into giving back uh, to yes. the community. Yes. And as you've mentioned, uh, through Rotary mm -hmm. um, as well, and through mentorship, I yes. know you're very passionate yes. about yes. mentorship yes. and recognizing mm -hmm. the women um, that you work with. Um, tell me about your journey of how you came to join Rotary and um, how that has been since. Yes, uh, Rotary is uh, the best... Uh, international service organization that one can ever join. And uh, I joined, I was, I, I first, I was an interactor in my school, mm -hmm. and I remember when I finished Mary in my senior six, because I was uh, an interactor and active, I was uh, awarded for being a good interactor. When I got to university, I didn't join Rotary because I was so busy and I got married and all that. But then when, I joined when I, Rotary. When I was in school, interact was for the rich kids, oh. the ones who had money. Yeah. There was a class, you know, <laughs> about that. I don't know if Those it was the, the same. perceptions. No, anyone can join Rotary, anyone can join Interact. I mean, those are the myths around it. Anyone can join. So I joined Rotary about uh, eight years ago. Uh, and what influenced me is because they had recognized my father when I was still in, prim in secondary school. Uh, Rotary had given a vocational award to my father mm. for excelling and influencing the business community, especially the entertainment industry. And in fact, actually, my, my father is one of the forces of the entertainment industry in Uganda, but he has never been recognized at that level. Because he brought, he had the biggest nightclub in actually the whole, I think, East and Central Africa, because we, I remember I would host uh, South African, Zaire, Congolese, in my father's club, it was called Sabena Nightclub. He had the biggest cinema hall, he had the, 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 the biggest, um, uh, 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 he had bars, he had hotels, and uh, he was a tailor, he was a designer, but he invested his money in entertainment because he was passionate about it. Mm. So when they recognized my father, I was like, okay, a person recognizes my father. I was so happy. I keep that picture. It is very, very memorable. So I joined Rotary, the Rotary Club of Bokoto. And I've been a Rotarian for the last uh, eight, uh, eight years. And I'm so glad that it is the best decision, one of the best decisions I've ever made, that when you join Rotary, Rotary has its values. Rotary has its objectives. Rotary has its uh, core uh, uh, areas of focus. And when you see most of actually the impact that we see in the area of environment, health, uh, maternal and childhood, education, fighting literacy and all that. Russia is, up, is behind, like kicking out polio out of the world. Mm. Russia has been contributing to the polio eradication for more than 30 years. And we are almost kicking it out all over. The, all, I think there are only one or two countries that still have polio. And we are kicking, we've been contributing and we partnered with Bill and Melinda Gates and we have been kicking out polio. We have built hospitals, we have built schools, we have built blood banks, cancer wards, rehabilitation centers. We have done a lot in all the areas of focus. We have planted trees. We are, ev actually, if you be intentional, watch every day we have Rotary meetings. Some people call them fellowships. Mm -hmm. And we have so many Rotary clubs. And we have, uh, in the global, we are about 1.4 4 million Rotarians. And also we have Rotaractors, the young people. And so we meet, we discuss, we do literacy, we uh, like weekends we are launching programs. Most of the Rotarians on Saturdays, they are so deep busy launching a school, commissioning this, doing this, helping uh, mothers to deliver, giving kids, doing all kinds of projects when you are Rotarian. You know sometimes you want to give out to the community and as an individual you can't do it and as a family you can't do it. But when you join Rotary it becomes a bigger force. So you said Rotary is for the rich. No, it is for the, actually it's for the people who are rich at heart. Yeah. That you share, you get $100 and say, let me give $10 or $5 to the community. Mm -hmm. You will get 10000 You say, no, let me take out 5000 Instead of buying food in Serena, let me eat this food of what, of how much? Or buying a shoe of 200000 I can give. So let's give because our communities thrive on giving. People and have and so some, many and some of the giving that you've had yes. has also impacted uh, women, especially some of them, like uh, the malaria campaigns, yes, I think, exactly. uh, that you have done, eventually yes. um, help uh, the women in community. Yes, so many women have been helped and have benefited from the education, from the health, the maternal. Ch Currently, I'm the chair of the maternal and child health program of the district, the, the Rotary district, and we've been promoting how we can serve mothers and children. We are building hospitals. We are giving mama kits. We are giving literacy. We are working with medical professionals, the nurses and the doctors and the midwives. We are telling a story and get all these small equipments, like our delivery beds. It changes a lot in a community. 
like a, a stethoscope uh, or um, just even medicines or rotary health camps. We always have the, the health camps that have run for almost 11 years. The, the, the cancer run that people participate in, all these contributions, the blood bank, we have a blood bank in Mengo which gives blood to even mothers who are delivered because we know that many women die today in Uganda because they lack blood. Actually, it's the highest cause of uh, maternal uh, death that a woman runs out of blood or gets, and they have no blood. We, we have uh, uh, so many uh, babies that are dying under five because of malaria or nutrition and we are doing interventions, working with governments, of course. We are, we are a political, we are not a political organization. That's the bit about Rotary, that we can influence all circles. And even in our discussions, we never bring politics, we embrace diversity. You find somebody uh, from this culture, this, and we are together thinking about solutions that will change the world, impactive solutions. I really want to encourage each and every person to join Rotary. If actually we had more people in the world joining Rotary, wouldn't be having these wars that you're seeing, wouldn't ha be having any challenges. Rotary is a game changer. Join Rotary today and you'll see how much you'll impact. That's a, a very, very passionate speech and something that we'll talk about. Rotary started initially as, you know, a men's club, but mm, later yes. we've seen women take part and Uganda has made remarkable strikes. We'll yes, be talking can, more about yes, that. Yes. We're going for a very short yeah. break. And when we return, we'll talk more about that and the work uh, that is being done and also the work that you're doing uh, in your SB, uh, especially to champion the rights of women. Going for this short break, as I've mentioned, don't blink. This weekend on CTV. This weekend on CTV. Don't blink. As we embark on a journey to realize our full potential, we all need expanded minds and limitless possibilities. We need to be accurately informed. CTV is your growth partner. With reliable, in-depth news, we tell the story from all perspectives. We bring you the story in real time. Catch our comprehensive daily bulletins in Juba Egorovie at 7 p.m. and p.m. edition at 9 p.m. CTV. Don't blink. Since 1963, this shirt has united fans and players across the country. It is more than just an article of clothing. It is a sense of pride for us as we catch the kinetic action. In the heat of the competition, we stand with our champion. This shirt brings us together. CTV becomes the principal shirt partner for KCCA FC. We are committed to the game, to bridge the gap and bring you closer to the awesome team you love. KCCA FC, more than just a club. CTV, don't blink. Welcome back from that break and thank you for keeping it CTV. It's the month of the woman and we are holding conversations on helping to break the gender bias in our community and we are bringing you people who are doing the work uh, to do exactly that so that we can draw inspiration from them. And today I'm speaking to Masi Kinawisha. She's the Registrar General of the Uganda, uh, of URSB and uh, she has held different positions before that and is very passionate about all the work that she does. Before we went for a break, you were telling me about the 
of work that you do in Rotary and how you're very passionate about the impact that you're creating in society, which especially touches uh, women and the young people and children. Um, Rotary is known as a place for networking. Mm -hmm. Um, that when you join because it, it expands your network and also empowers you, you know. And uh, as I mentioned before we went for the break, uh, the history of Rotary, as we know, it was, you know, started by a man. And for a very long time, it was like a men's club. And eventually, somewhere in the 80s, uh, we saw the club opening up and women were taken up. And I think maybe globally we might have 30% of women participation. And Uganda is doing the most. We are almost at 50% of women participation. So much so, like she mentioned earlier, we see that uh, we have more pre women who are becoming presidents in Rotary, um, just like um, she has been. So when you join Rotary um, to help paint us a picture, does it become automatic that the networking will start or there's an intentionality that has to be done? Rotary is, um, is a family. That when you join Rotary, we always have lapel pins, you see, we have that identity. You meet somebody with a pin and, like, oh, you're a Rotarian, you're a Rotarian, you're a Rotarian. When you join Rotary, it becomes automatic that you're like a member of a family and you feel free. It doesn't matter the titles, we meet judges, we meet uh, our honorable members, we meet ministers, we, all, we rub shoulders with these big forces. So just by mere fact that you have joined Rotary, pro there's no protocol. When I'm in Rotary, you don't told me as a registrar, I am carrying bags, I'm cleaning trenches, I'm, I'm carrying bricks, I'm doing... I mean, you we become the humility, the, service the humility, about the humility. Self. Yeah. actually, even my, and, and it's good for leaders to be actually Rotarians or for Rotarians even to be at the top, that you find somebody wants to clear away because I'm in this position, or saying, oh, there's no ticket for business classes, economy, I'm like, why can't I move in economy? Yes, I may be dead or to business class, but if economy is there and there's no money, let's move it. Like, but you are, you are entitlement. I said, I am a Rotarian first. Mm. Yeah. So it brings that humility. So the networks, you build and connect and meet people. It's a platform for growth. We go through leadership training. Actually, uh, Rotary is a good training ground for leaders. That it trains you practically and theoretically. We go through classes, there are Rotary leadership uh, uh, training uh, courses. There's, uh, we have a website with all courses and networks. You can download everything, go through the virtual trainings. But also the activity, you join Rotary say you're in charge of public relations. You've never done public relations, but you learn on the job. Before you know it, you're in charge of accounts. Before you know it, you're, in you're the president. Before you know it, you're influencing. Oh my God, Russia is the best place. And you're talking about women. Yes, we are so many women, especially Uganda, uh, the district, uh, and Uganda as a country. I, I think because women in Uganda are so empowered, and we are so knowledgeable, we are too confident. Many women have joined Rotary, and we have so many Rotary leaders. The, recent, the first, actually, Rotary uh, uh, district governor in our district, uh, as that time, 92111 uh, now, which has been split into two because of the numbers and other factors, is a woman, a Rotarian Rosette uh, Nabumba, mm. uh, a Nayenga. She, and she's done well. She's the past, immediate past district governor. The first woman, she did so well and we celebrated. Now, at the, for the first time in Rotary International, since Rotary started in 1905, we have never had a Rotary International president, uh, president. And we are getting Jennifer Jones starting work on 1st July. And the deputy is a woman. And women are so excited. But even through uh, the way, Rotary has made packages for women, women groups, women uh, projects, women-oriented projects. But also last year, we, uh, our, our district governor then, uh, past district governor Rosette Nabumba, mm -hmm. started an initiative on Rotary Roses. It is, uh, it's, it's an initiative for Rotary, uh, uh, Rotarians who are women and empowered, but also men have joined us. Mm -hmm. It is to empower women. Come on, women, you can do this, you can lead, you can be present, you can influence, you can mentor, you can do all these kinds of things. So, it is a platform for us to shine. We have also uh, programs like Women in Rotary started by the Rotary Club of Nalia and it's been going on. And every year we celebrate women, they recognize women. And this, and this coming Saturday, uh, it's tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> yes, this Saturday. Yeah. Tomorrow we'll be in Sheraton celebrating women in Rotary. How do we influence? What are we doing in our workspaces? What are we influencing? Uh, exactly. What projects so are that we doing for the that girl? So do in Rotary eventually yes. influences how exactly. the women um, are, are carrying themselves in their workplaces exactly. and in their careers, etc. And now even the Rotary program uh, mm. for focus for this, uh, the, the area of focus for this Rotary year is maternal 
and child health. Mm -hmm. It is women. How do we save women from dying? Because Uganda loses close to 14 to 15 women every day. Yeah. And these are preventable uh, causes. We can uh, give blood, we can get um, uh, transportation for women to hospitals, we can get them to health centers. So all these are solvable. And, and so Russia has made so many strides in empowering women and these programs and all these projects that protect the environment, the schools. Because when you talk about building a school and literacy, it is a girl child, it's a boy child, it is women that want to see this, the hospitals. I mean, there's a lot that has been done and all this benefits women. And we want to encourage many women to join Russia, many presidents in Rotary are women. Mm. Even the last Rotary year, in fact, they, we are threatening men because we are strong force and we lead. When they say, there's a, a friend who is uh, my, my, a Rotarian in my club, uh, Dr. Ndiari always says, if you want anything to be done, give it to a woman. Mm. For him, everything. If you want anything to be done, give it to a woman. And encourages, and these men, by the way, inspire us. In Rotary, there's no one who fights because of your gender. You now can't be led by women. No, it is a platform for everybody. You actually we feel so at peace when you are leading in Rotary, when you are leading volunteers. Of course, it's not easy like any other leadership. Mm. You have to put in a lot of skill, yeah. but it's an opportunity. Please join Rotary. Women out there, men out there, join Rotary. That school that has been pending in your community, that hospital that is not being built, that uh, community that is not mentored, you just need to join Rotary. Get Rotarians to come with and a strong force and work. finish the work for you, among other benefits. Very interesting. Yes. And uh, I, I also learned that um, the interesting thing about Rotary, like you mentioned, is it's mostly voluntary work. It's not like an organization or a typical NGO which will have administrators and when people are coming in you have to pay maybe salary, etc. Most of the work you do is voluntary and it's for community transformation. Actually, all the work we do is voluntary. Mm. I can charge, if I were a private lawyer, I could charge for a legal opinion or uh, handling your matter. But when you meet in Rotary, you ask me, oh, by the way, I have this challenge, how do we go about it? Russia is a platform, is a ground where you will just give, offer your service because your you're, co helping community, the you're helping out. Yeah. It's a, 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 a community of business people, professionals, community people. You bring your skills together to transform. So there's no commercialization. Mm -hmm. But also you can get business. We have Rotarians in business and they support one another. For example, if a hotel is for a Rotarian, Rotarians will find it comfortable to come and hold meetings and conferences in, in a hotel, hotel owned by a Rotarian. Mm. The same as what people, the same as if you have a business and it belongs to a Rotarian, you'll say, oh, support me. And you see some, even if you didn't have a plan and you see somebody with a lapel pin of a Rotarian, you're like, oh, I'll support a fellow Rotarian. So it gives you a platform to grow, but we don't charge, nobody charges. And we have corporate governance principles and structures. By the way, Rotary is the best model of leadership because in leadership in Rotary you know the president that is coming or the director or the secretary that is coming next year and the other year and the other they are all lined up all the three regimes are lined up and they are learning from this one so when this one exists already preparing already so the team that is taking a, a over on 1st July has already been plan. trained yeah. so they succeed these ones come and another team comes so you're already building a team it is so well structured that if the world decided to use the Rotary model, in even the organizations, mm. we have challenges of succession planning. Yeah. That you wake up and you say, I don't have somebody to leave. But what have you been doing? You should prepare. You should prepare. Pre a successor. Yes, you mentioned how the leadership trainings are also helping you. I mean, uh, being a Rotarian, because um, we are looking at all the different spheres of how you're serving and you know using your empowerment to empower other women. Mm. I understand that, uh, I think last year, you started um, a program or a project mm. for women in business. Mm. Um, and that was during the lockdown, um, especially at the height of the pandemic, mm. uh, to help especially those businesses um, that have, well, businesses generally were challenged because of the economy was down. Mm. Tell us about how far that project has gone one year later. Okay. That's in uh, outside of Rotary. Okay, okay. Well, uh, in URSP, we're in charge of business rescue yeah. services. And our interest is to see, not only to register businesses, but to see them grow and grow and grow. But when they fail, we also uh, do a diagnostics and we ask why is this business failing? So we advise on business rescue interventions because uh, as per the law, it is a role. And when it fails and fails, you try and fail, uh, we advise it how to close in a legal way. People think that if you close a shop, you have closed the business. No, on the register, when the company register still shows that it is alive, active, and it, you can be liable to any you know, charges, annual returns, or tax, and all those uh, that come with it. So we also decided to say, yes, we're in charge of registration of businesses. 
And we've been in the pandemic. How do we empower our own women to do their side hustles, which at the end of the day become their main hustles? And we started an initiative within the uh, URSP because we are 167 women out of 308 uh, uh, staff. We are 50, around 52.7 percent of women who are more women in, in the institution. We said those women who are doing business, how do we support one another? So we launched a women's club to support. Uh, sometimes they come and display. We advertise them in our internal magazines. We support you, and if you know that your friend is doing good a peanut and it is branded and protected so why do your colleague just just support them support them let them grow because outside URSB we have a future mm -hmm. so we have to start our businesses and we start them now we have to walk the talk because we are promoting registration of businesses we also want uh, a community or uh, a staff that uh, starts a business and it thrives and later when their contract is done or when they are no longer interested, they can grow one another. But we have also worked with you, Will, Uganda Women Entrepreneurs Association, with different with private sector foundation, Uganda, and different women's organizations and groups to uh, encourage women to formalize their businesses. As you know, that uh, Uganda has been rated uh, several times in, uh, consecutively to be one of the most entrepreneurial uh, countries, especially right. the women. Mm -hmm. And miss, most of these businesses uh, are said to be okay, on or, or run. It is on and run. Most businesses are run by women, even when the men establish them. You need a woman at the reception, not that we are using them as tools, but just they have the skills, they have all the qualities that are required. So how do we promote the women that hold businesses? How do we support women to be financially independent? Because the woman of today is not this woman of Kameza hmm. who is for Kameza. No, your Kameza money is no longer relevant. Okay, no, I'm not trying to discourage or men who give the Kameza, Kameza money. <laughs> yes, but we are not, we are beyond, look at us beyond the Kameza. Mm. We can be financially independent. You, you've we can talked make about money. something important about mm. registration, which is work that you have been doing. Um, and we've previously had um, a conversation on registration of businesses here on uh, Month of the Woman. Um, I would like to know the numbers, where we stand uh, right now, because we say Uganda is, uh, we have a lot of informal businesses which are mostly run by women. How are we doing at the moment in terms of taking up uh, registration of businesses? Oh, thank you very much, Martha. That's a good question. With uh, Regarding the uh, statistics of registration, uh, Uganda has less than one million b uh, registered businesses. And specifically on our register of Uganda Registration Services Bill, which is the only institution that is mandated to register businesses, we have 800,000 registered businesses. And these have companies uh, for profit, companies for non profit, and business names. So when you. 800,000, 800, that, that, that's almost only. like the same number that we had last year. Yes, so how can no they grow? They just grow, uh, but that is averagely. Mm. And Yet, when you go around the country, mm. you see so many businesses mushrooming. You open a, a, a shopping mall, there's a business. You open this, you start this. The businesses are all around us, mm. but most of them are not registered. Many people register for different purposes. Maybe they want to bid, they register just to bid. Others want to enter into a, an arrangement or a partnership, they register. But they miss out on many benefits of registration. There are so many benefits that come registra with registration. Because you own that business, it is also for sustainability. Maybe your family house, your household, when you're gone, that business stays beyond your life. Mm -hmm. uh, the issues of uh, transactions with government, government cannot transact with you or work with you if you're not registered. You have to be properly registered with mm -hmm. URSB. Uh, the issues of trading across borders and trading within borders, it is important that you register. You, register, you can't access finance, for example, alone when you are a business and you're not registered. Mm. I don't think any bank would give you that. And you, you, URSB also has a product, actually Uganda has a product, the Security Interest in Movable Property uh, product, which is uh, set in 2019. It is a law that we implement. It, it allows uh, people to use their movable property to access finance. And movable property, I mean you, your cars, your trees, you don't have to, your border. jewelry, your computer, your watch, mm -hmm. anything that has value and can be uh, registered. So you register it with us as U URSB. Of course, uh, we have agents, uh, uh, the banks do, uh, before they give you any credit using either your computer or your border or your television or your shoes and jewelry, they have to first make sure it's registered within our system and attached to you as Martha, so that you don't have to go to another bank to use the same uh, for, as collateral. So, and this helps a lot of women, because it goes out of the traditional uh, borrowing and lending, where you have to use fixed property, like a land title. 
Men and women may not have land titles, but they have all these beautiful things uh, that they can use to get uh, loans. So that product also is very good for women and young people to access finance from any financial institution. Yeah, right. Um, and later on, we'll be joined by another Rotarian to continue the conversation that we had started earlier. We're talking about celebrating women and the work that is being done by those uh, who are on the ground uh, to, to break the gender bias. How are they doing it? We're taking tips and tricks and lessons from them. We're going for a very short break. We'll be right back. Look at her go. Don't miss her glow. She's beautiful. Elegant. Brilliant. Confident. She adorns a crown of glory. Woven in grace by her story. Clocked in a gown of strength laced with diligence at the helm. Who art thou, O great mountain, before her? Honour her for all that her hands do. Her works bring her praise. She is the Proverbs 31 woman. She'll never be in a daze. She will emerge victorious. She bravely faces adversity through this crucible like silver and gold. She unfolds unscathed like a phoenix rising from the ashes. She laughs at the days to come, her tongue laced in wisdom. Her children arise, they call her blessed. Her husband, yes, he praises her. She is woman, we celebrate her. We are CTV. Don't blink. Now, Ugandans, as you know, are still in Tobata to Tagala to take it our day. That's why at CTV we work tirelessly to make that possible. Now my name is Tim Cash and alongside one DJ Frost to bring you the brunch time request to Lubavo. You make me jump like kangaroo. I really love La Vexo. Now this show happens every single weekday between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. Now showing on CTV, Don't Blink. This weekend on CTV. This weekend on CTV. Don't blink. Welcome back from that break and thank you for keeping it CTV watching Month of the Woman, special programming that we're bringing to you to celebrate the woman but also to bring you people who are doing a lot of work to break the gender bias in our community as is the theme uh, of this month. And just like uh, before we went for a break, I promised you that we're going to have another guest joining us on the set and she's right here. Marin, welcome to the set. Thank you. Uh, before, uh, while we're still on the break, you are telling me a very interesting story on how you came to join Rotary and Rotaract. You said you're looking for family, and Massey indeed had talked about that, that Rotary is family. 
tell us more, uh, tell us a bit more about that. Yeah, um, Rotary is indeed family and uh, it can get so, so emotional because I, I, I grew up as an only child, but uh, I grew up in a f with cousins and it, it doesn't really complete you as, as a family. You want that sibling or that sister that you can, blood sister that you can confide in. And um, when you tell someone, when you tell my friends that you are an only child, they'll be like, oh, you must be a spoiled brat. <laughs> you must be having everything. Mm -hmm. On the contrary, I wasn't that kind of child, really. Mm -hmm. I grew up with my auntie and it was, it was, it was, it was a, a tough upbringing. Mm -hmm. But when I would get into school, I would maximize socializing and yeah. making friends. And then I got into this thing called Interact. And you, you know about Interact in yeah. school. And Interact in school, you know it is for high-end kids. I told Masi and she, and she didn't agree. <laughs> it's for, it's for high-end <laughs> high kids and uh, you try to fit in there. You try to look for how to get in, in there. In my school, compared to the other school clubs that we had, uh, for Interact, if you had to meet, you had to, they, they forced you to carry a drink, yeah. and they had to stipulate mm. what drink you carried. <laughs> exactly, uh, exactly. And even how you wore. I remember when there were social gatherings, they would tell them, wear better shoes. Mm. So people had to go and borrow so that they look a certain kind of class. But it's well, <laughs> now we're, we're seeing that the barrier and the biases, yes. the social norms trying to be broken when you enter Interact eventually. Yeah. So yeah, I try to fit in, and I'm this kind of person who really when I want something I force my way into it like mm -hmm. I really want to be yeah, part I think of, the intentionality that she talked about yes, earlier yes yes so I got in there and kind of I rhymed I fixed myself and got in there then I realized <laughs> there was also Rotaract so when I got into university I didn't join Rotaract on university why because when you go on campus you, you, you're like you have to finish you have to do class you have to study so I'll just see activities and whatever so when I left campus, there's a club called the Rotract Club of Kampala Dako. Now this club, the caliber of this club, they will tell you you cannot join this club. First of all, it was a club of smokers. I knew they would kill me if they are watching it. Watching, they used to smoke and drink. And I used not to do any of that. So I was like, how will I fit into this? Then one of my friends said, Marion, the aggress aggressive you I know. Mm -hmm. And so I know you will fit in. So I got into that club. And one of the things that I got in, how I, how I, why I got into that club exactly is I wanted to know what drives these youths or young people to have this bond but also associate with drinking and smoking. And then I was like, I can be the different one. Yeah. I can be the different one. So, in so there. you're always the change you want to see. You yes. went there to, to be changed. Yes, I, though I didn't get in to change what they were doing. No, no, no. Yeah. I just wanted to be the different one who can associate with certain people that they think are, are bad people, bad influencers in community. Quote of like they yeah. smoke, or they drink, mm. or they do this, or they what. No, I knew I would fit into that. Rather than going to look for another class of retractors who are, you know, these people who. <laughs> like they are, they are, they are, they are, they are, like they are perfect. Yeah. Yes. So that is one of the things. So I got in there and I really blended. I you, really you blended. You joined, um, and Rotaract. I know right now you're on your way to becoming one of the leaders in the club that you're in. Tell us about that journey. Yes. So I joined that Rotary club and became, and I became the international director. International director is supposed to link like other clubs out of Uganda with these other clubs. So I had that, I had that, uh, that, what do you call it? Um, is it co mm -hmm. No, the corporate, uh, corporate, uh, where you, where you, like not stakeholder, I don't want to put it on that level. Where you have, where you have, the, you have that, that, that um, gift where you can easily get people together. The collaboration. 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 A, a, a collaboration. Yeah. And, and actually that's yes. one thing that um, yes. the people who know you have yes. told me. They say oh, she's really? a coordinator. <laughs> Just give her a call and she'll be able to get for you See? to coordinate you. She, she, she got me out of my program. I got her here. <laughs> she got me out of my program. I got she's her here. Mm -hmm. Oh, but, um, but, but thank you, Marcy, really. So that is what I did. So we got a club called Muthaiga mm -hmm. in Nairobi. Yeah. And then we had the core in Kampala. So we had weekends, projects together. Then I became president, uh, a vice president, president, and then I was picked by two leaders. You heard about two Subira. 
But you're just skipping through. I'm skipping you're not through telling us take exactly. You to you're taking us somewhere. We're interested in that journey of how this person who was just, you know, an outsider yeah. joined this social club and, and suddenly, you know, they, they, are, they are becoming the president and vice president. <laughs> what was it in there that helped you to reach there? I think it was just being an open minded person mm -hmm. and being social and not, and, not, and not judging people for what they were. Because I know in public or in whatever, we are always judged, especially ladies. Yeah. And the, the people that we used to have that vice a lot were the ladies, like were the ringleaders. Yeah. And those were my best friends. After one of them was actually my, 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 my namesake, she was called Natkunda. But I, I blended in there and I did not, I did not judge. We would sit there and they do their thing and whatever. But when it came to community work, we'd, do, we'd go together would do everything together. When it came to bonding, when it came to family, then another thing we used to go to our homes, visit our homes. And they'll come to your home and look out for you and check on you. But that one thing that kept me there and up to now that I'm going to be a leader in the Rotary Club is the bond in Rotary. The bond in Rotary. That they, that they the look. People have called it even a cult. But yeah, <laughs> but the bond, it's, yeah. it's, 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 you can't describe it. Mm. You can't really describe it because there is a way someone just looks out for you. Mm. Even so when you're as, lost. As, as, um, as a young graduate who entered this place and yeah. you're now in Rotary, yeah. would, what impact would you say you have realized um, in your other aspects of life, especially in your career, just because you've, you joined Rotary? The network. Mm. The network has been great. Is I always tell the Rotarians and Rotaractors that I train, because I train at the Rotary Leadership Institute, is like never underestimate the network that Rotary has. At any one point, can I make a phone call to anyone, of course, apart from the president, <laughs> to, any, to anyone, <laughs> and I'll get what I want. Mm. Of but course, I can. might disagree with that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can make the call to the president. <laughs> She can, but I think I can get to Mass and she gets to the president <laughs> yeah. if I wanted him. So that's the network. So that yeah. is the network. Mm. Rotary has that network. Uh, like, um, I remember a few days ago when we were going to have uh, an induction in our club, just making a, 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 an example, we were trying to look for someone who can pin the Rotarians. And they said, please get us Katongole, uh, uh, Emmanuel Katongole. I just called, I said, please, Katongole, this is your daughter. Come and help us officiate over this function in my club and I was like it's okay what time seven and he was there mm. but call him on a daily on a normal day mm. of i want to meet you it's official or it's a meeting and everything mm. it will not he, you you will have to set up an appointment It'll probably take a week or something yeah yes yeah so in this month of the woman, I know that um, as Rotary, even the work that you do yeah. um, also um, impacts and shapes and helps um, a lot of women out there. Um, when we started, uh, Masi had shared with us her personal journey and how she has become the woman she has become. I want to also bring that to you. Mm. What does uh, Women's Month mean to you um, growing up? Is there at anyone, maybe at a point in your life where you said, okay, this now makes sense or it's just been that way. I don't know. You share with us what the mother of a woman means to you. The mother of a woman um, means a lot to me because I know I have been, I, I know this is a little bit sensitive why what Rotary has made, I won't dwell on Rotary again, why it has made me what I am and the passion I have. Because people, th people say, Marion, you breathe, eat, sleep Rotary. My mom is a polio victim, and Rotary is worldwide known as the that, that has brought Rotary, I mean polio, almost to a close mm. in, the, in this world, where we always say we are this close to ending polio. And I see and saw what she goes through, the pain. She does not walk well, she's actually a bit lame, and she got polio at her early stage, she was in, in S3, and you know S3, how girls can be. You're, you're, that's the time when you're you discover who you are, and your S3 is very delicate. Your hair, your, you know, that age, mm. and then boom, she gets polio. So she really fell sick, and school ended for her. So she didn't really finish school. She didn't uh, have a course or anything. So she started doing her businesses, her voodoo cars, whatever, and everything, and all. So in my life, I was been, I'd, I'd been thinking, what is that thing that I can go 
compliment on what my mother has done. And she looked after me because she paid for me, she did everything, and here I am. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the strength of a woman, even yes. when she's not educated. Yes. Yes. And and that is what drove me to become what I am. That I have to make sure that I give her what she didn't get as a girl or as a, a woman because she has done her, 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 her shops and everything. She looks after herself. She's so, so, so independent. Mm. She's so independent. And I was an only child. Maybe she thought I would get lost in the wilderness mm. and never mind about her. But we have got stuck so together and your sisters that every time I look at how she's limping and walking, it reminds me of what I'm supposed to be doing in Rotary and my role, mm. and what Rotary has done to the community. And, and when you're doing this work, um, have you met other women who are like her mother? Yes. The work that you're doing? Yes, mm. very, very many. You get into the community, the community work that we do, and you see women, especially when there's time when in, in, in uh, Kamuli, and there were these mothers also crippled, others were not having anything to eat, and we were taking their medical camp, like just to give free medicine to to the community, but you do not have enough to give them. You just have this little that you can. So that is the, That's the Rotary camps? The, the, camps the, the, that the, the, the Rotary Family Health Days that we carry out. Yeah. So that is what keeps me like sticking to Rotary because I think we just have a role. And if you have something that is driving you behind, like what I've just told you, it, 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 that like, I have no words like mm, that. It's the drive that keeps you. Yeah. So what I'm hearing is that uh, you've gone into, I would say, humanitarian um, life, giving back to community, inspired by your own personal story. But even with the little that you have as Rotarians, you continue to give. You continue to take to society. Um, I see Mas is thinking. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're thinking about some yes. of the people yes, that you have yes, met yes, along yes, the way and the journeys that you've yes, moved. Yes, yes. You can share with us. So, so many of them. Uh, Rotary is a space. You know, we, sometimes we find ourselves shedding tears mm -hmm. that but you have this big heart, mm. but you may not have the financial muscle to build a school as an individual. But when you come as a Rotary, I, I remember we, we have projects all over, mm. and you go to these projects, you see people, diggers, you have to take part in extracting and treating mm. women that are, I mean, there's so much out there that we can do. And my heart always bleeds that if we can get as many people to oh, give, Lord, yeah. because mm. We are what we are. Maybe some people gave towards our progress. Yeah. But when you get to the top and get successful, we forget to give. And you find professionals, people with businesses, people that have a little money. Mm. If you have a business, if you are a successful professional, mm. on the top, even the middle, even the low class, mm. and you're not giving even just 1% of your earnings to community service, then God will ask you, because what are you? It means that you're sucking the community, you're doing this. At least, be at, you be part of an organization that makes influence like Rotary. Mm -hmm. When they're talking about the Rotary Blood Bank, I say I have shares because I contributed. Absolutely. I'm a Rotarian. The cancer run, the schools. I mean, it is all over. So once we all get into the heart of giving, then we will change our communities. Okay, we see so much corporate social responsibility by entities. And we want to encourage people. Partner with Rotary, because Rotary has integrity. We are people of high values. You will never, we put in a lot and we cannot even uh, uh, take the money. There is accountability. You contribute to a school, you see a school there. Mm -hmm. So uh, please let us join Rotary. And when Marion was talking about the, her mother's story, and I remember that my mother, I'd never seen my mother ask money from my father. Because they are running businesses together. She's a financial arm. She's working so hard every day and night making sure that our biz family businesses are thriving and working. Mm -hmm. So I grew up, up with that spirit that I'll become financially independent mm -hmm. to the extent that I have never asked for a man money. Mm -hmm. If you're my spouse, a husband, and you feel that I, sh I need a flower, you, you, get, you, it. you get it for me. Yeah. I'll not ask I don't you. Have to ask I'll it. not. <laughs> so I have been brought up like that. You have to be financially independent, not yeah. this uh, Kameza or I beg. Yeah. So back to Rotary. Oh my God. I can speak and say, but Rotary is behind the scenes of all these transformations that you see 
in the world, like polio, I had already mentioned polio, the saving of mothers, the hospitals, the schools. Many children have been sponsored by Rotary. Mm -hmm. We have built schools in remote areas, and these children have gone up to university. Yeah. We sponsor also children in universities who are from uh, indigent families, vulnerable societies, and they have gotten degrees and they're influencing. And also we ask them, please, if you benefit from this, also influence, contribute. So if we can create that model that you benefit from a system, also give back to that system. And it is voluntary, it is voluntary. Nobody's forced, mm -hmm. nobody's paid to do this work. It comes from the heart. Mm -hmm. And like Marion said, just take a call. Uh, come on, I need this I as a Rotarian. And remember when I came, I said, it is because of Rotary that I'm here. I know. I said, it's Rotary that I'm here. She even mentioned yesterday. I said, yes. <laughs> Again, so, it is Rotary? Yes, Rotary. I'm coming. <laughs> so, I mean, that is Rotary yeah. for you. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. Indeed. Um, and we have dwelt into um, your other work as mm. well, because outside of Rotary, I know there are leadership yes. courses that you're yes. doing, there's training that is being done, yes. and uh, how it has influenced your doing communications uh, at the Ministry of yes. Health. Yes. Um, you can also tell us a bit of how your, your work, you know. Your work swings <coughs> into, yes, um, at the Ministry, you know, M M Ministry of Health is awareness. Yeah. Health is awareness, health is communication, and health is promotion. So everything can happen, the diseases that are here and there can take one, but if you do not communicate well, that's why you see when, just case in point, when COVID came in the country and the vaccine came, it wasn't about people not refusing to take it, they just needed to be aware yeah. of what is the vaccine about, what is going to be the side effect when I take it, how am I going to react? And there were all these myths. So what we do, what has, uh, I think Rotary built, or has g built um, uh, uh, public, sk public speaking skills yeah. in me, mm. because we were trained. I, was, um, I, I trained in Rotary, but I was trained before. I started training. But it, it, it built a platform in me. It built, uh, it brought out the, the esteem self-esteem mm -hmm. in me. I used to be a very shy person. Mm -hmm. And and every time I say I used to be a shy person, people would say, Marion, you're so far away from being shy. But I used to be. But Rotary gave me that platform and built me built in me self-esteem, public speaking and 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 being being uh, like Fast open and efficient, yeah. open, mm -hmm. efficient. Like I, I don't hide. I don't. I'm, I don't fear to get in. To, I don't fear to approach anything. So when I'm given a challenge or a duty at Ministry of Health, I will. I will consult, but I will go for it. And if I collide, at least I will not hide in my pride and say I can still do it. No, I will get it. So that is the platform that has given me at Ministry of Health. And at Ministry of Health, by the way, I'm well known for the person who can get anything I want or who I want for something to be done. If we're having like, because I deal with stakeholders and more, my work is more of advocacy. So if they say we're having a parliamentary engagement with Minister of Health, I know whom to call and I know how to connect, connect that person. Mm -hmm. So if they mean, of course the ministers, for them they have their different level. So that was training that was given to you that enabled you to be exactly, that, that coordinator. Exactly, exactly. Even at the time. Yeah. Also share an experience. Yeah. That I love customers, our clients, so, so much. Naturally, mm. yeah, I think I'm supposed to be a communicator and a PR person. Mm. <laughs> and I'm so passionate in getting the clients satisfied. Mm. So when clients complain, and many of them have my number, my number is out there, send WhatsApp, there's, there's a delay here, there's a delay here. And we have a system, a very good system of communication and, and, and uh, a handling of complaints and, and feedback to clients. Mm. But when a complaint comes to my phone or my email or WhatsApp or, or uh, uh, Twitter. Mm. I shift. I work with. I work with my PR team. Let's resolve this. Let's resolve this. So some people think that I am micromanaging on that yeah. issue, mm -hmm. but the Rotarian in me and the human in me is once satisfied. If I were in those shoes of the client. Mm. Because Rotary makes you go to tie the shoelaces. Absolutely. Rotary takes you to the trenches to remove all the garbage. Because that's what we do that's in the weekend. We mm. So I can't now come here as a, an accounting officer or an executive director and I put on this jacket of an executive director and the Rotarian in me is thrown away. No, it is part of my personality. Absolutely. That I will serve the client, I will even go down and do get to the work. And, but the people who don't know the Rotary part of me or the community work that I get in, they'll say, oh, this 
person is embarrassing me. Uh, uh, so how can a whole executive director be found on the streets cleaning or attending to a client or running around to help a client? That is the Rotarian in me. Mm. So you become a Rotarian, it blends you, that it changes your personality and you want to serve to the best because service about self is what we stand for. What is service about self? Service go. about self is not in installments or in seasons. Mm. It is throughout that when you are at the top, even at the middle or at the low or side, you have to give the service because that best service it will the, uh, is the one that will take you to the top if you at all you're aiming at the top. Yeah. But it also gives you that satisfaction that yes. And you know what gives us satisfaction? It's getting out of this office and say, Oh, by the way, the processes have improved. Oh, I will be served by this person. Oh, thank you for the good work you're doing. But even when they, you're surrounded at church, you're getting out and people are saying, oh, by the way, there's this file that has well. Then I'll find out from my office, this is why. And, and I make sure that the client mm. is told, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this. Well, if I, when I don't have time, I say, please call this client and get them served. Call this client. So, you know, sometimes the public service uh, model is, okay, we wait, you wait for people to come. But I say, no, we can't wait. Let's go and out. When somebody asks for information, let them say that you call me. No, you call that person because you need them. They need their challenge addressed, and it is you, the expert, to address it. And in any case, that's why you ask for the job. That's mm. why you're there. To, to do the job. <laughs> so, oh, well, if you've just joined us, you're watching The Month of the Woman, which is special programming that we are bringing you here on CTV. And uh, we are celebrating people who are doing the most to break the gender bias. And with me here are women who are leaders in Rotary, a club that has been historically for men, the Rotary International. Oh, yeah. But they are breaking barriers. They've gone on to become leaders uh, in the different clubs that they are leading. And the interesting thing is, as being Rotarians, you are women who are donors, charity yes. donors. Uh, yeah. And usually we see that, you know, women are people to be pitied maybe, mm -hmm. to be given to. And now, um, do you ever take a moment to say, I'm actually a charity donor? Does it ever occur no. to you? you, you yes, a, a humanitarian. Well, well, I give to society. I give. I even give my uh, church tithe. Mm. I'm a giver. We mm. have to give. Mm. Uh, because the society has been shaped in a way that... Uh, Women's kamane is always, you know, yes. they don't. No, 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 we give, we give, and we're so proud of giving. We give everything we give. Sometimes we give one. We're doing projects for girls, the girl child. Mm. We're doing uh, projects for empowering the boy child as mm. well. We're doing all these projects. So our money, we give, and we, I'm so proud that I give. Mm. I give, I give. Of course, we get so many calls. There are people that you can't give, but through an arrangement, I mean, through Rotary, it's easier to pay a Rotary club or to contribute to a Rotary project than one on one because there are so many problems yeah. Yeah. in the world like I was coming here one of the ladies who is uh, who stayed somewhere and he said uh, madam I need 40,000 my daughter has work so I said I'm going to a TV station I'll send it to you later I mean there are those isolated cases yeah. that you give but you know even giving what has turned out mm. people ask for for us who are in the public domain people ask for even Somebody wants a birthday cake, a party cake, they say contribute to my birthday party cake. Uh, weddings, we are contributing to weddings. You know what? So I'm wishing I'm saying that should we give to everything? No. Yeah. But as long as you'll be judged in some circle saying, oh, this person has given only 20,000 or 50. Mm. But you have an more giving to give to yeah. an, impactive, an impactful project, yeah. like a school or a hospital. Yeah. So I don't like giving to luxury that I'm giving you two million to go and do your wedding or your birthday or what. When Yet I can use that two million yeah. to a, a project, a school, a hospital, a, any Rotary exactly. community project. So my money goes to community uh, related service projects. But if you come for party, I'll give you a little, maybe a hundred thousand or one fifth. It's up to you to say that I mean, because my other money goes to bigger things that make uh, impact in our communities. Yeah. And I have, um, just to ride on to that, during COVID, I was assigned to be in charge of the donations. Remember the donations that were coming in kind, the yeah. POSHO, at Ministry of Health, not yeah. at OPM, because there were two points. And this one was at the Ministry of Health. So all companies, um, all the companies that you can believe of that had POSHO, that have had sanitary, that had PPEs, that had uh, beans, that had maize, that had, I don't know, all kinds of donations that came yeah. and you were hearing. So one of the things that I loved doing when I was given that, that assignment 
is the smile I saw when we were giving these donations to people in the community. Mm -hmm. Now, us, as, as, as a Minister of Health officials, we are given a certain package. But if you go to my neighborhood right now, they had never like lacked. You know, at the time of lockdown, they had never lacked. Every time I got food, I got beans, I got peas, I got rice, I got oil, I got flour, I got posho, I made sure my neighborhood received what I'm eating. That, now, that is the rotary in me. Mm -hmm. In fact, to add on that, also when COVID struck, in fact, this is cuts across in all rotary, uh, Rotarians. Yes. What I did was, I looked, I got money, bought, uh, yeah, bought to the, the Duka, the, uh, yeah. some community. Mm -hmm. I told the shop lady, I like supporting also women who run shops and businesses. I said, pack uh, 30 bags for 30 families, put in posho, put in what, mm -hmm. beans, oil, uh, sugar, and bill me. And I asked the chairman to go and pick them. It made a lot of change. And I paid, uh, uh, the, the, and it was so impactful. And that takes, a Rotarian, that takes a Rotarian's heart. Yeah. Any person would not think about that. Because in my house, I say, yes, I have all this food in abundance. But there's that person out there that just needs two kilos of beans to see the other day or mm -hmm. another day mm -hmm. that needs just 1,000 or 2,000 to take a commando. Mm -hmm. So why not do it? Mm -hmm. And it gives, I'm telling Martha, it gives that sleep, you sleep and well. the peace yes. you that you feel well. that you have impacted. You sleep well, yeah. yeah. What I'm hearing is you women are so empowered. Mm -hmm. You know what you're doing so well. Um, and like we mentioned at the start of the show, um, that uh, Rotary in Uganda has made great strides uh, that even Rotary International hasn't made yet, mm -hmm. in a sense that we almost have a 50-50 mm -hmm. uh, gender yes, balance absolutely. Uh, in, in, yes. in, yeah. in participation. Mm -hmm. But you're going ahead to create um, other pockets um, mm -hmm. of Rotary Uganda and, and putting up initiatives mm -hmm. for women. Mm -hmm. Why is that so? I think it's so because, like, um, I was just reading down on, um, on the screen and I'm seeing Rotary was historically a club for male, yeah. and indeed it was. Mm -hmm. And little by little, as the years go on, I think from last year, last year, but our, our di district governor, past district governor, some lady called Rosette, mm -hmm. there's a way she prioritized women. Mm -hmm. and, and some other years ago, they prioritized women and they said that it is time for Rotarian women in Rotary to take their stage to take their stage, to take their presence. Because you know, you know what we are in society, we are, we are known as the weak link. And that thing really sometimes gets to me. Mm. Because it we, you. Yeah, it disturbs me because we have the potential. We can do everything that everyone is doing in this country or in this world, we can. But we just need to have that push. And, and that is what Rotary is doing now. You know, we prioritized women, the, like she was telling you, the girl child, and there was something called the we, we, Rotary Women that, that was started in, in DG Rosettes here. But what, why, why, why is that? Rotary Roses. Actually, they're called the Rotary Roses. You see, we are, that's how we are taken, as a rose. Mm -hmm. I know it with us. Something delicate. And then, but something delicate. Because mm -hmm. when beautiful, you pinch, and beautiful. and beautiful, when you take off that petal, and you look at it, and you blow it, and you see how it goes. Look at how nice it looks. So that is what we want a woman to be like. And that is what our role is. And that is what Rotary has trained us to be. And this coming year, as we are going to be president, start come July, the, the Rotary International President, for once in 118 years, I think now, 18 years, finally we have a woman who's going to be a Rotary International President. And she is saying, imagine Rotary without women. That is her, 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 the thing. Imagine Rotary, but of course, imagine Rotary without women. Imagine Rotary without maternal, and, I mean, maternal and child health issues. Imagine uh, the world without polio. Imagine a world, but prioritizing women and saying it's the time that women are taking their center stage. And interesting, you know, that it's a women thing. Even the colors that have been put purple and green. Women just add on that, and we are not leaving anyone behind. No. We have Rotaractors, they're part of the Rotary Roses, the women in Rotary uh, that is being celebrated uh, every year by That's the Rotary Club of Malia. So today. tomorrow we'll be in charge of celebrating. Mm -hmm. We're not leaving anyone. And this is the attitude we have created. Rotarians are so confident and comfortable. Mm -hmm. And we never feel insecure. Mm -hmm. We never feel less. So we lift 
the young people mm. through mentorship. We mm. have intentionally done mentorship programs and we need to do them for the young people. We are not only doing it for girls, but also for boys because today it's very hard to deal with an empowered woman. Mm -hmm. We don't want to find ourselves as empowered women without empowered men to I know, right? To, to and it's so interesting that that yes. statement yes. keeps coming back and yes. back on this yes. panel that we've been yes. having since the first of so March. our sons and yes. daughters, mm. as we bring out our daughters, we are also bringing up our sons so that we are empowered to yeah. handle our daughters. So we are empowered women, empowering uh, and inspiring young men and women yes. to, for continuity, for sustainability, so that in the next 50 years we look back and say, I was part of that, I was part of that game. So as women in Rotary, we are intentional. And we want to thank our men in Rotary. Mm. They have supported us. Mm -hmm. They have supported us really, there's yeah. no segregation. We embrace diversity. Right we are leadership. a center yeah. of embracing diversity. Yeah. And I already told you, in Rotary, we don't consider your color, your size, your monetary worth. We don't. Mm. You are at the same playing ground. When you are president, we have been presidents of CEOs of banks, of ministers, and they accept our leadership. So that is the standard that we have created. And like I have been saying, if you want to get the magic of the impact, or the, even the optimally utilize your opportunity to serve and make impact, join Rotary. Mm -hmm. But you can also join other influencing organizations, your community, uh, faith-based organizations, there's also Lions, there's also uh, 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 Toastmasters, there's a lot. Mm -hmm. And we do all this, we, we, we support and complement one another. But we're here to speak for Rotary. Please join Rotary. It doesn't take anything from you. In any case, you, the, the day, the, every year you lose by not joining Rotary, you lose a big network, big opportunities, big connections, an opportunity to serve and influence the world. You, you. you mentioned something about what would uh, Rotary look like, and I'm looking at it in terms of uh, the community service that you do and the impact that you have on communities, which also, uh, well, the, the, the wider community. Uh, what impact or what change have you seen over the years as women who are in Rotary and the participation of uh, the upcoming women leaders that, you know, because we have these women leaders, we are doing this better, we are doing this more, and, and we are focusing on certain causes because we have women leaders? Th thank you. Um, yes, uh, I already talked about intentionality and the benefits and what we see because of women is uh, we have now uh, reorganized ourselves to have intentional projects. Mm. That yes, we are women, and that is why Rotary Roses was created. Mm. We are women, yes, we are scattered in different Rotary clubs around the world. How do we get together and do specific projects to help the girl child? We're doing sanitary uh, interventions, uh, sanitary wear, we're doing uh, uh, mentorship, mm. we're doing uh, uh, we're giving opportunities to young people to lead, we're sponsoring some in education, we're supporting them in maternal and child health. So we are intentional about it and also encouraging the girl child education and literacy. But at the back of our mind, we're also not leaving out the boy because it's these boys that will engage our girls in the future. So we are intentional, we have these programs and our Rotary Foundation, uh, 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 which has uh, international funding and district mm. funding, mm. Uh, supports all these components of, uh, of, uh, of uh, grants and projects in the seven areas of focus. Yeah. And actually, when you look at the recent statistics, you find that uh, the Rotary International grants and have gone a lot to disease prevention, mm. disease prevention because of the COVID and, yeah. and uh, uh, fighting uh, polio, fighting all disease. And uh, especially in, in families, because when a family is done, it's a woman that is affected. Then economic empowerment. We are not saying that you come, meet, fellowship, another. You economically empower yourself mm. and also empower your communities around you. And you know, when you empower a, a woman, you have empowered a whole household, a whole household that a woman will not see their child uh, failing to get school fees and not borrow. They will go to the extent of borrowing or selling their best attire so that their children go to school. Yeah. The women, there's a, I already told you how women are special. Mm -hmm. They will not see things failing and just sit. They are the best crisis managers. Mm -hmm. They will make the best <coughs> intervention. So uh, Russia is benefiting from this whole wave of women in leadership. Rotary International and, and all Rotary clubs because we're intentional and we have been supported and the infrastructure supports the gender diversity of women and so we know that there's so many projects that we've implemented successfully and the best is yet to come. There's a lot that is in the pipeline and we will continue to celebrate the women that give 
out, we celebrate the women that give. Instead of buying that beautiful shoe, the Prada or the handbag, mm. or the Max and Spencer lingerie or whatever, you say, no, let me so give, it. give it out yeah. to, give to, to, the, to the community. And, the and Martha, just to add on to that, Rotary has also made women reach a certain level of leadership. Because I'm just taking it up from, of course, I know that with the traits that Marcy has and what she has, mm -hmm. how she has she elevated, she how she has, leader. yeah, how she has elevated, even where she is, mm -hmm. I know she had a push of mm -hmm. what Rotary has put her. I mean, the level that she has put her, yeah. and like you said, she, she can leave anything mm -hmm. for Rotary. Mm -hmm. Why? Because she thinks she owes mm -hmm. a certain bit of her life to Rotary. I'm looking at the CEO of Unoc, um, the the oil. Uh, Prosy, she's called Prosy. Mm -hmm. She was just a, ro a, ro a Rotarian, she was an officer, she was a Cipla, she was a river. But because of the, because of what Rotary is and the connections, she just sprang out and she's now the CEO of uh, Uganda National Oil Company. And then you look at Rosette, uh, the past district governor. She has been getting award after award mm -hmm. because of the kind of leader she has been. Basically, Rotary has opens that space where they realize you, pick you out, and then you shine mm -hmm. in your own in your own world. Yeah. Well, our time yeah. is, is is really up. I would like to thank you too for um, engaging us today mm -hmm. and the uh, interesting conversation that you've had with us. The takeaway, I think, is uh, if you want to register your business, if you want legal advice, if you want you know to easily reach those other connections to lift you up, especially as a woman make sure that you join Rotary because there you'll be able to meet uh, Masi and many other executives <laughs> uh, right there. I'm yet but to get high, so high. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but also getting, uh, you know, the leadership that they're talking about, which sets mm -hmm. you up on the path, just like the examples that she gave us mm -hmm. um, in closing. Well, that's been our conversation today, just examples of women who are helping to break the gender bias, who are helping to uh, bring about equality in our society and how they are doing it. And that's our conversation for this week. Uh, women of the Month will return, month of a woman rather the special program returns next week on monday with more interesting people and trailblazers so don't blink uh, at the top of the hour we have brunch request coming up and also later on be sure to catch our news pm edition and ng by Golovi at uh, 7 p.m and 9 p.m i've been your host amelia martha Nachtimbo. goodbye <laughs>